Hi students, in this clip we will discuss about toroid as we have discussed about uh, solenoid in a previous clip. Uh, toroid is also one type of a solenoid but it contains a uh, number of uh, turns above the conductor. So you can just say that it is called as uh, a large number of uh, insulated material and it's a uh, number of tons basically it is conductor but we have just quoted it uh, of a it is metallic wire but coated with the insulator so they both are nullifying effect of each other in a normal word you can say that toroid is called as a endless solenoid so you have just learned that solenoid is like a spiral shape so toroid is also of like the same but it is placed on the uh, conductor so on the conductor i have just mounted such type of arrangement so for better understanding i have made such type of arrangement uh, for you let's say uh, this is the white wire actually it is conductor metal and on that i have just wounded so many wires uh, if you practically see such type of toroid these wires are not making such type of uh, distances between them they are very much closely uh, attached so when i have just connected such two type of both the paths so you can see that uh, there are two different paths i have one is um, the first one you can see that one is the first one where i can find it out uh, very first while current is going inside and current is coming outside and this is the conductor on that i have placed uh, such type of wires which are also made up of a metal so such type of arrangement uh, is look like a toroid i have just opened it so in a next as gradually we are moving forward to the theorem part we will discuss about its actual geometry so you can see that in the figure i have mentioned that uh, different different points let's say this is the center of my toroid o and there is one point p that is one point s and another point which is uh, beyond the toroid that is called as a q so you can say that ideally only point s is in contact with the toroid or on the toroid and point q and point p are not on the toroid where your center is o so let's say again we are focusing on this toroid so you can just see that uh, over here this is your actual toroid uh, the point which I have mentioned is called as a center which is over here in the hollow part and point P which I am talking about this point P is somewhere in between but not on the toroid so you can see that so this is the primary arrangement I have one point that is called as S so you can see that point S is on this point over here on toroid and i have mentioned that point q so point q is somewhere over here outside somewhere over here outside but not on the toroid so you can see that my practical arrangement of the toroid if you just focus this one you can see that so this is the hollow part this hollow part contains that uh, two points point p and o where o is at the center and p is somewhere in between where s is on the surface and q is somewhere out from my point p so you can see that current is only passing through such type of points so again i am just showing you a figure you have again a toroid i have just cut it for you and you can just see that uh, it's a internal part and that point p internal part and point p its a radius is called as r1 part then on point s i have my radius is called as r2 part and then at outside which is at r3 part so you can see that only current is passing from this much loop which is only part of s which is at only r2 radius so after understanding of this figure we can just use two type of uh, points either inside or either outside or on surface so let's say i'm talking about point p you can see that point p is inside but there is no current so integration b dot dl 
is equals to mu zero i but you are aware that my current will be zero so even though i am just opening this part bdl cos zero it will make a current zero so for this one part my magnetic field at the center will be zero uh, next point that is called as a second point and let's say i'm just point, talking about uh, point uh, q which is outside and which is actually at a radius r3 so this point is at outside point q so integration again b dot dl is equals to mu zero i so i can have again b3 will be again zero but i want to discuss about that point uh, uh, third one that is called as on point s which is already where current is passing so these are the points where magnetic field is coming outside and these are the cross points where you can see that my magnetic field lines are going inside so these are the points of a dot and cross so point s we are talking about so point s contains uh, integration of b dot dl here my current is actually passing because point s is on the toroid so first of all i am just integrating b integration of dl is called as a 2 pi r2 and angle is called as a cos 0 mu 0 into i so you can just say that uh, my equation will be b 2 pi r2 mu 0 i so now i am just putting these values and uh, simplifying it for you so b equals to mu 0 i divided by 2 pi r2 uh, for n such type of loops i have just talking about only one loop so i can have a small n equals to n divided by 2 pi r2 in solenoid also we have discussed about this thing number of uh, turns or number of loops per length or radius so my equation will be b is equals to mu 0 ni this is the same equation which we have learnt in solenoid so there is no difference between the solenoid and toroid in equation point of view but it's a practical arrangement is something different as you can see it is called as an endless number of turns and that was only bounded on the current carrying loop while my solenoid is only uh, are merely a loops or turns this is the primary difference we have now there is a question toggling in your mind that uh, what is the primary difference between that uh, current carrying loop or solenoid and toroid so for you i am just simplifying it so first of all you can just say that uh, similarities between solenoid and toroid so first of all we will discuss about similarities First of all, you can just say that both are electromagnets. Number two, it is containing electric current. Then and then we can get its magnetic field. Uh, third part is called as a both contains the same formula, which is called as a B is equals to mu zero ni or mu ni. So this is the primary relationship between the our solenoid and toroid. Uh, now differences. Uh, first difference between the solenoid and toroid. That is called as it is containing cylindrical type of shape. While the my toroid contains circular because it is uh, somehow called as a duff ring second point which is containing difference between that is called as a our magnetic field is uh, decreasing outside and it is stronger inside you can say here magnetic field is inside but because of the equal amount of number of turns it will be zero third one is called as a, it's a containing uh, a uniform magnetic field 
and here you can say that is called as a non uniform magnetic field so these are the primitive differences and similarities between our uh, solenoid and toroid so you are right now quite familiar with the differences and similarities of a solenoid and toroid uh, you can also accumulate different type of similarities and dissimilarities as per your uh, convenience understanding and equation point of view but i have only highlighted a few for you so you are quite familiar with the solenoid and toroid geometry thank you